Today, let's have a little play session with acrylic, glossy acrylic sprays from Dina Wakely Media. Hello, my creative friends. Jessica Sanders here. Welcome to my channel. These will be in stores February 2020. Ranger sent these to me to help me work on the cover of the Blue Edition Journal, which I sent back to them, so I can't really show that to you today. But I just want to play with these sprays, kind of see what they do. I've already watched Dina Wakely's Creativation clips, and so I may try out some of the techniques that she talked about there. And I'm just going to have a playtime. So I have my sprays, and to make it quick and easy to, sh to shake them up, sort of pre-shake them, I actually shook the entire box to get the ball moving and get those colors moving. There is a white. So a white substance, um, you may be able to see it. There's, maybe you can see that little light section there. So that's just part of the acrylic in there. And so you, you definitely need to shake these up every time you use them. And they also recommend that you clean the nozzle when you finish. So I have baby wipe nearby. Hear that roller ball? You want that to be moving. You want that to be moving and shaking in the bottle. And because I've had mine laying down flat, that's why this is here. If you have them stored standing up, that's going to be on the bottom and you can shake it however you like. So I'm super excited about these sprays. I'm just going to, I have everything all laid out here. So let me set these aside. I'll try these one day with the acrylic colors that they match with, the acrylic heavy body paints. These are also acrylic, but they're, uh, a glossy acrylic spray. So Dina says they're not inks, they are like spray paint, but without the propellant. So just keep that in mind when you're using them. So I have a array of, an array of stencils. I've got this large star stencil, I've got squovels, and I have the letters. And I've just taken out, and I'm probably just going to use these three letters today, just for the sake of playtime. These are so fun. I've got collage paper. I love, love, love what these sprays do on this collage paper. So I have plain collage paper and I have the white collage paper already on my table along with some Tim Holtz paper. Let me set these things aside for the moment. I have some chipboard to play with and I ran out of tags. So this is my last big tag. So I just cut some white cardstock to just play and try out. And I have all these papers to catch the overspray and I've protected my table because these are permanent when they're dry. Now, if you use a baby wipe and a scrubber, you know, you may be able to get them off with some things, but I just wanted to catch all that lovely spray on these papers. So I'll be taking off layers of papers as I go. The collage papers that are printed, I have the printed side down. So if they're white printed, the white printed side is down. That way I'm doing the back of them and that black is going to stay nice and crisp or the white will show up. If you do it on top, these are rather opaque, I've already found out. And if you put it on top, it's going to cover up the words and the image. So make sure you flip it over and do the back. And there we go. So I have all these papers just spread out to catch overspray. And like I said, I just love what they do. I'm just going to take them off in layers. But let's just start with one of the techniques I saw Dina do. The techniques I saw Dina do at Creativation was to put down her, her either her stencil or her chipboard pieces. And I'm just going to do both here. And spray over them. If you haven't seen it, go watch the the, uh, the demos from Ranger, and you just spray over, right over, just like that. Okay, and you can spray more or less. Totally up to you. Again, I wanna. I think you could probably leave this until you're finished with your craft session and then clean them all at once. But I'm trying to remember to clean them as I go. Just remove your chipboard. Let's see. I do have a way to remove this, and that is to use the collage paper. So one thing I did when I made my cover was, when I made these, I pressed 
this just lightly on the letters and sometimes it will just pick up the stencil like it did in that time. <laughs> but it's pretty cool if it picks up the stencil for you. And then, <laughs> see it didn't work since I was trying to show you. It's not going to work today. You may press your, your little stencil or masks as these are down on here. And if the letters, if they're letters, you know, they're backwards. So you just flip it over. A nice little piece of paper. Now, um, because I put this on this side, I don't know what I'm going to do with that. I'm just going to set it aside for now. It'll catch some overspray too. So I let this dry just a little bit as I was talking and chatting with you. Set that aside for later. And let's see what color goes really well with the turquoise that we just used. Hmm, what color do you like with turquoise? This is a nice soft magenta. Hmm, we could do fuchsia. That would really pop. Or we can make it more monochromatic. There's marine or ocean. Let's 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 see. This is kind of a skyy theme going on, so let's just spray it with ocean. And we will Let's sit for just a second, not long. And per Dina's technique, we'll just roll some paper towels over that. Now my paper towels have a lot of texture, so maybe they're not the best ones to use, but look at that, really cool. So it sort of resists itself because it's a glossy acrylic, so it's not going to adhere as much to itself. But in the spaces where I had the masks, that pigment sinks in. Look at that, that's really pretty. And you could just take and embellish this. You could outline it, you could use pit pins to add some depth to it. Um, you could doodle in the letters or around the edges. Ooh, that's pretty. Okay, so that's one technique she showed. And like I, like I said, I'm out of tags, so I'll switch over to cardstock now. Just gonna put that away to dry. And I'm leaving this here just kind of hanging out there. It's going to make some shapes. So let's go for, Dina called it a nebula effect. So let's go for a nebula effect. And I'll just sort of do a rainbow of colors. I forgot to shake it. So you spray a lot, right, for the rainbow effect. <laughs> Not the rainbow effect, the nebula effect. Spray a lot. And let's go with this really bright fuchsia and spray some more and overlap it. So you see it's resisting itself a little bit where it's been drying. And, and this is ungessoed paper, so that does make a difference. Let's go with the lemon. Lemon. So you go over the top like that. Now that's kind of crazy looking, right? I'm gonna go back with the marine, no, with the ocean. Now, as these colors layer, you get all these nice little speckles here. Look at these speckles that are showing through. And this modeling is because of how wet it all is and because of some being wet and some being dry. It dries pretty quickly. It's pretty cool looking. Oh, look at my butterfly now. That's why I left it there on the side so I could get some effects from it. <laughs> now let's add a little white. I don't know what the white's going to do. We're just gonna try it, right? A little splattery. Never hurt, look at that. Oh, that's pretty. I failed to clean my nozzle, so. You could also do this dripping, which is fantastic. It gives a little bit of different effect than splatter when you drip. I think it also would be cool to just put some of these in a pipette and go with that. So let me clean my nozzle, which I forgot to do. So don't, don't do as I do, do as I say, clean your nozzle. 
Look, I sprayed my bottle. I can still wipe that off for the most part. I'm just sort of delaying what I'm doing and letting this see what it's going to do while I'm cleaning my nose. It's just fun, fun, fun. All right, wow, look at this really, really vibrant piece of paper. This would be great for stamping on, for creating a tag from, <laughs> since I'm out of tags. Really look how, how pretty those colors work together so nicely. All right, look here, I'm catching all this overspray, so I'm going to have some lines and different things, and a butterfly because I'm going to spray that right now with night. <laughs> Cleaning it. Um, Maybe pick a little bit of that up. There we go. So I don't know. I just like the way it's looking so far. It's kind of cool looking. Let me switch chipboard sh shapes. I'll switch to this chipboard shape. And let's get some more cardstock. Let's try that, that, that sort of ghosting effect again. Let's see. Let's do this. We'll put it on the edge there, right? That'd be cool, right? And let's see, let's try different colors this time. So I have cheddar, we all love cheddar, right? And what goes with cheddar? Opposite of cheddar, I'm getting spray on my sprays. I'm not going to worry about it, okay? Is it okay if I just don't worry about it? This is lime. Go crazy. Let's go with eggplant. One thing when I took Dina's class back in the summer last year was that we talked about different colors of faces and that sort of thing. So let's move that there. Put it there maybe. It's going to catch a little bit more spray. Okay, let's try that ghosting effect again. Let's do, hmm, what did we do before we did? A light color, let's try a dark color. Hmm, you know what, I put eggplant on here already. So let me do that again and let's just see what, hmm, I wonder if it's going to show up or not. I don't know. Let's find out. There we go. And then with this ghosting technique, now this is different from dilutions, right? Because this doesn't reactivate. Just pick that up. There we go. Okay, so see, even though we used the eggplant here at the bottom for the initial spray, it still resisted and soaked in really heavily in the place where we had the mask before. So that's kind of cool looking. So this would be cool for. Same thing, it's just journal fodder. It's all journal fodder. So let's let this dry and keep going. Ooh, I like how this looks so far. Let me fill this up. Some of it went through. I did, I, you know, I have no problem with that. Now this is some Tim Holtz paper and it's looking pretty nice. It does bleed through a little bit but you can see the butterflies and the text there. And this is going to be great for collaging later. I'm not finished with the sheet. I like what it's looking so far, but definitely not done with it. Let's see, let me take a piece of our white. I'm really excited about this. So let's take a piece of our white collage. This is a collage words. So the black one looks like this. This is the one with the white. I'm putting it with the words down. So you'll know because they're backwards, right? Words down and spraying the back. Just going to pick one color this time. Shake it up, shake, shake, shake. There we go. Lied, I totally lied to you. I'm picking two colors because I can. And it's fun. And I'll take this piece of tissue. And it's on the back where I had the letters before. 
that aside. That's kind of cool, right? I made those letters stand out. Let's take a look here. <laughs> I need white paper so you can see. You cannot see it. So because this is very wet, I could take it and actually put it in my journal as it is right now, but I want it to dry. I just wanted you to see the words. I'll let that dry and then I'll show it to you again later. I'm using I'm using wax paper sort of as a as a palette paper. It's great for using it's you know inexpensive and a great surface protector. And I can put this on it and let it dry. Nice. Now let's look at this paper. Ooh, look at that. It has nice colors in the background. So this is going to be great for collaging. This one also. Nice. And I'm just going to unstick these a little that's going through. So this one is catching a little bit of the overspray. You can see when I flip it over, you can see that black really well, but you get the color that's behind it. So I'm going to keep working on these. How about I do this one now? Let me turn this paper. I'm trying to make the most of my play session and have the most fun too. <laughs> so that's kind of what I'm working on here. Let me flip this one over. There we go. So I have the big mess of paper. This, like I said, this is not meant to be some perfect thing. It's just a play session. So let's go with, let me see. I don't even know if I've used all the colors yet. So let me put them in order. Let's do pink. Let's see, this is magenta. Then we have fuchsia. Then we have eggplant. Those are three um, in the same color family. Then we have lemon and cheddar. All of this kind of in between the greens. There we go. I'm putting them in order so that I can use them <laughs> more effectively. Then we have uh, the blues, which have marine, ocean, and turquoise, which is a blue-green. And night. Oh, I didn't realize I had night. Just going to... Night, if I use night on this paper... It's going to be too dark, and this is not going to show up. So, But this will work on the white collage tissue. But we're doing the black right now. So I'm going to stick with lighter colors for this particular one. Now I could use actually the white. If I want some white in here. Let me try that first. It's going to make that black show up, right? Let's go with some... I'll just work my way down from the pinks. And keep on going. And I'll um, put it back where I found it. Another thing that this spray does is, is it crinkles up this paper, which I think is super fun. Now, eggplant's pretty dark, but I still think the black will show up. And look how that white is mixing because it's all wet. All right, so what will mix with... This purple would be a, a blue, so let's do ocean. Don't really want to use yellow because I might get some weird funky color. And let's use turquoise. There we go. Now you can just use one color and you can just see what happens. Next I will use olive because I haven't used it yet. And let's even, I don't want it to mix with that pink. So now I have, I could print this pink off of here, this pink that's mixed with this white. I kind of want to see what happens when it dries. So I think I might leave it that way. Move it over to my drying sheet. It's going to take a little bit to dry. So I can just make it run too. That would be cool. Don't you just love runs and drips? make it drip that way there we go and now I'm going to set this aside to dry and we'll just see how it looks when we're done awesome now this paper this paper still has that and now I have this cool looking butterfly but you know what if I want it to be pink I can make it pink because 
just going to go right over it. And if I just let it sit there, those colors from the background are going to show up a little bit, or I could tap it off with a bit of tissue. So if I wanted to, I could absorb a little bit of that. And now it's got some pink on there as well. And I have butterfly shapes if I'd sprayed enough around it, which is kind of cool. I'll set that aside for now. Okay, let's try the white tissue paper now. This one is white. It's, I can see it has words on it here. Not sure if you can see the white. Let me see. Let me get this Just any colored paper. So now I think you can see how it has the white on it. So let's see what happens when we spray it. We did the white collage words. Let's just do some of this white tissue paper. And this time I'll just make it completely solid color. I'm gonna move it over so I can catch overspray here on this. And I'm loving the ocean in this. <sighs> you guys, let's do night. I haven't done night. I really just, the colors are so vibrant and pretty. I love them. Okay, so let's just make it all. I heard Dina say in one of her lives that it's like glassine. I, and I don't really know that what that is, but this is just a nice crinkly kind of, it, it makes a really nice crinkly effect on the paper, so it's pretty cool. And I'm cleaning my nozzles, guys. Keep me in check, remind me to clean my nozzles. Now, I'm not going to reveal this right now. I'm going to set it aside. I hope I had it upside down. <laughs> I didn't pay attention. But I'll set it aside and I'll see, show it to you when it's dry. I put a lot of spray on that one. All right, so I'm still, remember I picked the letters up with this one. So I have the word art and the pink and it's looking kind of cool so far. Let me just spray a little bit of the night on there. Just see what happens there. And what other color? Marine, how about marine? So the night is a more purpley dark blue. The marine is a more green dark blue, so still nice, nice colors. I don't know if that's going to show up more or not because our pink is actually fairly opaque, but I could use either side of the sheet, right? Now, if you wanted to paint over this and you didn't want this to show through, you could always gesso it. So keep that in mind. If one of these turns out in a way you don't like it, you can gesso it. Look at this shape. I'm spraying that, totally spraying that. <laughs> it's going to show up really well. Going for cheddar. And fuchsia. And I'm really not worried about the chipboard at this point. That's just something for later. But I want it to show up on that collage paper on the front, see? Oh, this is the wrong side of the collage paper. So, just show it like this. I would put it in there like this because this collage is turned face up. That's right, I wanted to try it face up and face down so you can see it blots out the butterfly here. Whereas if I, I did it on the back side, so this is the back side of this one that's been sprayed on and I flip it over and I get that gorgeous color but you can still see the, the ink, the, um, design. You can still see the design on the paper. Yeah. If you paint on the top side of your tissue paper, whether it's Ranger's tissue paper or, or your collage paper or whether it's Dina's a specific collage tissue paper, if you paint on the top side of it, it's going to cover up what you're doing. But if you paint on the back side, it's going to make it stand out. Unless you do a dark color on the black one and a light color on the white one. So here's a collage words. And it's dry now, and it feels very, like, I, I feel like this wouldn't tear very easily. It does tear if you wet it because it's the collage paper. It's supposed to do that, but it feels stronger with this acrylic spray on it. So I can really see the text now. I don't know if you can see that very easily or not, but, but you can. It makes that white stand out. 
Now the pink is a pretty light color, so a darker color would make it stand out more. Let's take a look at this page, which is a flip down sheet. And see, so you can see here how that is really showing up. So let me do one of these with a dark color. Let me just finish this one out. And I'll just use a variety of colors, but not the lightest, brightest colors, okay? So let's do the darker colors. Let's see. We have some night on here already. We'll put a little bit more night. I think it's okay to do this ocean. You can see that I like blue a lot, right? And the, we already did the pink on the other one, so let's don't do that really bright light color. Let's go with marine. I do have to remember to shake these. And I think we can also throw some cheddar in there just for fun. Oh, see, it's doing that nebula effect that Dina mentioned. <laughs> So fun. Okay, now I'll take another piece of collage paper or I could take regular paper. Let me just print with cardstock and see. I'll just print that off with cardstock. This is actually two sheets of cardstock, so I'll do it on both. Oh, look, you have some interesting effects. Now, remember, some of the paint on here was dry already and some wasn't. So, interesting effect. None, nothing is gessoed today not testing gesso. I will test it on different kinds of surfaces later, but not today. All right, I'm gonna flip this over and let's see what we've got. Okay, now, so you can really see the white and it's a ghosty effect, right? But it really, it makes those designs really stand out. And let me get the tissue paper with the black that we set aside earlier. And it's not completely dry. So I think I'll just print off of here as well, just to pick up that excess paint. And yeah, I'm just making some fun and interesting papers, right? So let's flip this over. All right, so I think you can see, first you can see how it's wrinkly when it's drying. See that, which I love that effect. I think that is super fun. And next you can see how it also makes the black text stand out. So whether you're doing unstick people, unstick. <laughs> so whether you're doing the white, the collage, the white printed collage paper or the black printed collage paper, just keep in mind what you're trying to make stand out. Use dark colors with the white printed and use the lighter colors with the black. Now I did have some dark colors here, right? See that? And the black still stands out, but it definitely stands out more here with the lighter, brighter colors. Here. I can't wait to put these in my journal, guys. I am excited. All right. What have I, I have not used my stencils yet, have I? So let me get out my stencils. I only used the letter stencils. I didn't even use the other stencils. Okay, I set these aside to finish drying. Flip it over, flip it back over so it can finish drying. There we go. Flip it. So this this paper from Tim Holtz, and I don't even know if you can get this anymore, but you notice it's not as clear as the collage tissue from Dina. So this one becomes more translucent. This one doesn't. So just a different effect to be aware of, that's all. Let's do the stars. Now, this is going to have the opposite effect of the mask, right? Because I'm going to be spraying in the stencil rather than in the mask. I'm gonna actually turn this a little bit. And then when I spray around it, it's going to be a little, it's gonna be the opposite. Let me, let me get the piece of paper that we did this with. So remember, I had this masked off and I sprayed this part second. So this is going to be opposite time and we'll compare it when I'm finished. All right, so first let's just spray. We'll just do some of that. And I don't want a whole, I don't want it to be super solid in, in everywhere, so we'll just do some. And of course, 
don't forget, let me get a bigger piece of paper to print your stencil. You get a nice effect with that. And if you want to keep these clean, drop them in some water or wipe them off with baby wipe right now. So if you do it now, it'll come off. If you wait, it'll end up like my letters and like this one is bound to end up as. Okay? So, set this aside. That was my print off of that stencil. <laughs> look at these stars. Don't they look nice? Very cool. Now, let's do a background color. Hmm. Let's do lemon. Because why not? This has dried some, right? This is going to resist where I spray this. And we put a lot. But all in one corner. And then, going back to my paper towels, right? And I'm pressing down kind of hard because I have... So this resisted this yellow, so it's not as much. But you see where it's speckled? Of course, the yellow is going to go in. Now, I could come back with my stencil and do it all over again. And I don't know what effect we're going to get if we did that. <laughs> and since I don't know, let's try it because that's how we learn, right? Now, this is already going to resist and beat up some, and we know that. So what colors will go with our... Let's go back. Let's go ahead and do... Let's do light color. Let's do magenta. I want to call this carnation, but, but Dina's carnation is much lighter than this. So let's just really spray in some of those, but not all. Like that. Again, I'm going to print it off because, yes. Because, because, because. Because of the wonderful things it does. <laughs> I am not a singer, guys. And I'm not going to lift that up. I'm going to let that sit there. Rather than go over it with the towel. Because I don't want to lift it off of there. And I've already used it, right? And a nice print there. That's fun. And I can go back and do sort of a similar effect where I printed here. Now if I go in with the stars. Let's see. I'm going to set this aside. I'm doing two for one here. Let's do, I am not going by color theory. There we go. So nice and heavy spritz. Back with my paper my towel. I think this way you can just get, get it up more quickly and more smoothly. Diane Reebley does it right with her stuff. So you see this resisted where it was already there and dry, and then it soaked in. And because I lifted it before it dried, that's the reason why it came off. If you just let it there, stay there like this one, it's going to dry over the top of this, and this is going to be really glossy and shiny on top of itself. One thing about the gloss sprays is when you spray them just on the paper by themselves, they're only slightly glossy if, if it's just <laughs> plain paper. It's if it's ungessoed and you spray it on here, it's just going to soak into the paper and it's not as glossy. So the same for the watercolor paper in the journal. Guess what? That was that's the next idea. Let me grab the the small white journal and we'll spray some on the watercolor paper. And you'll see it's going to sink in the first layer, but the next layer will be more glossy. So let's try that now. I'm just going to let this dry and then we'll see how it looks. Look, I made it run. I can make it run even more. There we go, nice. So let's let that dry. It's gonna take a few minutes because it's, it's a lot of liquid. So let's just go to white journal. I just played in this here and there. And let's just see what happens when we spray. Let's use the same ghosting effect. Uh, I'll use my butterfly. I'm going to do that, and we'll do that, and we'll do that. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Now I'm getting a nebula effect on my, on the butterfly. I'm going to 
print this. Let's see if the ghost effects works with this too. Okay, I've got some nice, let's do green. What green is this? Lime. Let's have a lime butterfly. Want to? Oh, didn't clean the nozzle. When I used it last, I didn't clean it. Okay, there we go. Now pick it up. <laughs> oh my goodness, it glows. It glows. Now you can do whatever you want with that. Let me just put it. Let's, let's look at my papers that I've been playing on top of. And then I'll show you everything we've done. And then we'll wrap up this video. So this is where I picked up the letters, remember? So you can see the letters are still showing. Again, depending on what you do with this, it can be a lot of fun. You can really take that to the next level. And then this one, I sprayed on the top of it rather than on the back side. So that's why the design is covered up, but it's kind of cool, I've got a face there. This is all journal fodder. That's all I'm doing is journal fodder. Collage stuff. Sprayed on this one, on the back side a little. Nope, that's the front. <laughs> sprayed this part on the front. Moving all this out of the way. And this is just the plain tissue paper. Ooh, I, oh, it's not, it's the white. So see how that white is showing up there with that. And I think I wanna just add some more. Now I'm down to my wax paper, which is protecting all my surface. Wax paper from the kitchen is great. I like how that looks, like it makes me wanna do like a movement there, like that. Looks pretty cool, I think. Let's go for more. Go for more. Go for broke. That one didn't move very much. I didn't do it fast enough. Ocean. Uh oh. And I don't know if I'm doing a very good job of cleaning my nozzles because I'm kind of just having so much fun just playing. All right, I made a big mess with that. And let's just, let's see, which is the front. This is the front, so let's print on the back. And why not? It's just going to pick up that wet color. Nice, juicy color. I'm gonna turn it and print a little bit more where I have a lot of color. Now I could think I could just spray this on my wax paper and print with it, which would be pretty cool. So let's see, this still needs a little bit, let me let this dry. Ooh, look, you can already see a lot. Look at that, that's cool. By the way, you can use this as collage paper too, this wax paper. I do it, I do it all the time. Of course, you could use your stencil on here. These are the large squiggles. I have no idea what's on the other side of this, so don't know what really effect it's going to have. Going for the dark. See, this is what happens. You give an artist a playtime. All right, we'll just see what happens with that when it's dry. And I'll just, again, I'm going to print on a piece of paper. I'll just use the back of this one. Back of this one, not the front of this one, and print from my stencil here. Use the back of this one to press it down. Oh, it's still wet, oops. Oops, okay, that's okay. So I messed it up a little bit right there, but anyway. Okay. Ooh, that's a nice print with that spray. Look at that. That's cool looking. It's a great spot for journaling. I'm going to let everything dry and then I'll come back and we'll chat about our results a little bit. Okay, everything is dry now. This is all dry. I have a whole stack of things to share. 
so I'll try and go through kind of quickly, but I just wanted to share. So remember, this was the ghosting technique where we started with the masks, then we sprayed over the mask, removed the mask with this sheet of paper, the back here, see that? And then after that dried just a little, we sprayed on top with a different color and rolled over with the paper towels to get that ghosting effect. Now, this is kind of like uh, very close to the same color, so you can't see very well, but you can always go in with something like a pit pen and add some shadow on that edge. Smudge it a little. And it can really make that letter stand out. So I'll do that really quick just so you can see. Cool thing about pit pens, they are smudgeable for a little bit and then they're dry. And that is it, so. Just do, I won't worry about smudging there, just so you can see. So you can make that letter stand out and pop out. Of course, you could use like a gel pen. You could use a Posca pen, like a paint pen, or even like um, some sort of fine tip pen, like a Micron or something. And just add little edges to that letter and make it really stand out. So, if you use different colors than I used, it would stand out even more, right? When I picked up the letters, you can see that shows up more because of the contrast of the background. So, pretty cool. Fun effect. Remember, this is the flip side. Here's another ghosting effect with the face. I use the same color in both places. You can see the shine a little bit, the sheen a little bit, but not super glossy, but a little bit glossy there. This is printed off of the stencil. This was clean up off of the tissue paper. Look at that nice wrinkled texture. Isn't that cool? Then we did the reverse of the ghosting effect. So here we used a mask over the letters, but here we used the stencil we sprayed first and then we sprayed the yellow in the background and used the paper towel to pick up the excess. And there you go. Then we did a third spray, which was through the stencil. And you can see really how glossy that can become. So pretty cool effect there. This is another ghosting effect. Only this time I did stamped with the stencil, right? That was my overspray on the stencil. I stamped it and then I came back with the spray. So nice. I want to show you that you can stamp on this. So let me move things really quick out of the way here and get out a stamp. I'll just get this face stamped out because I think it'll be cool. And archival ink, of course, because it's waterproof when it dries. And I'll just ink up the stamp. It's probably not going to be perfect because, you know, who cares about perfection? Not doing perfection here. So, but I kind of like how these stars are and I want our eyes to be in that vicinity, so. Now they have a new printing block that will fit this size stamp. I just don't happen to have it or don't want to get it out if I do have one, I don't know. So you can see, you can stamp pretty easily over the sprays. Pretty cool. Stamp on the back a little bit more just to get that ink off of there. There you go. So pretty cool, now I can just take this and use this however I want. All right, so that's the ghosting effect that Dina showed at Creativation. Now this is the sort of what she called nebula effect. Now this is cardstock, not a tag, but it's the same, essentially the same type of paper, very absorbent, no gesso. See the ink actually, not ink, she specifically said it's not ink, it's acrylic paint, but the color went through the paper there. So you can get this really cool speckled effect. See how it pushes the color around these little circles and dots. And you can also see the shine here because I used a lot of spray. That white just was pouring in there, mixing really nice. This is the white dripped on the dry spray. It's the spray, the acrylic spray, but dripped, right? So lovely, that's beautiful. Then I had the overspray pages. So this is 
some Ranger collage paper. It's not as translucent as the Dean Wakely collage paper. Um, and it's sprayed on the back here. I could use either side, depending on how much color I wanted. And then I flipped some over to the other side so it would spray on the front. So you can see here that this is you can't see the butterflies as much as you can when you spray on the back because it's acrylics. It covers up, it, it covers over. And so, still, so it's pretty cool looking. You can see where I put this on the other side, this little mask. So I used the chipboard as a mask. That was pretty fun. And look how these chipboard pieces turned out. Really nice. I've got to find a place for those now. These are some just plain collage tissue paper from Dina's line. This is the back and this is the side that I sprayed. So you can really see the difference in the, the color and the sheen there. There we go. Same here, same thing, blank collage paper. Now here's the collage paper with that's printed black and lots of color on the back of it. So you can see, as long as you spray on the back, it's going to show up really well. Especially the lighter colors will make the black show up. Okay. And then here is the white tissue paper with a lot of color on the back. And you can see how it also shows up. Now this one I have a lot of color and texture, but I have another one that has, where is that, this one. So you can even see how the words on the paper are coming through. Again, this is sprayed on the back of the collage paper. You could use it either way in your journal as collage tissue paper, but this is sprayed on the back and it makes the white stand out. So there you go, there's two of those sheets like that. Here's a third one, this one shows up really well also. All the details are there. Now this page, I sprayed this side. And guess what? This was the front side of the paper. So pretty much almost all of that white is covered up because I sprayed it. But it does show up a little bit on the back side, but you can tell it's backwards because this text is backwards. I can still use this, it's fine, and I can use it either way. The other thing that you may notice is all of these papers are wrinkly. See how wrinkly and crinkly they are? So that's a pretty cool effect. This is where the puddles were. It's much more glossy than where there are no puddles. So I really like the texture it creates on these papers. Now let's look at the words. So this was the first one I did and it's the white collage paper with the words and you can see it's a little bit difficult to see the words and that's because this color, this pink, magenta, is just, it's not very dark. So it doesn't have a contrast for those words. Now it works great on the black. Again, it's all crinkly and nice. Here's one that I did. So it's a little darker and the lettering stands out a little bit more. Now this one is that nebula effect that Dina was talking about, right? And it looks really cool right here, but you can't see the white text really hardly at all. You can see it a little, but not much. And also because I sprayed it with white on the back before I sprayed it with the blue. I actually think I sprayed that with marine. So I sprayed it with white by mistake. Then I sprayed it with marine and it's the white was there first. So it just doesn't show up. So it's kind of interesting. I can still use it as collage paper either way. And the other thing I wanted to show you, which I did off camera, was I took the collage words with black text and I sprayed the back with yellow and white. So there's a lot of the white acrylic spray here. And so when I put this on a journal page, that white is opaque and it's not going to let anything in, in the background really show through. So see, even if I collage this onto here with gel medium, and normally it would disappear because it's that kind of tissue paper, it just kind of disappears, right? But it won't disappear if you put the white on the back, which is a handy, handy thing, right? 
pretty cool. So there are all these little papers with the words. And then we also did a, the ghosting effect in the white journal. And I was trying to show you how this paper absorbs the, the gloss acrylic spray and it doesn't look as glossy. So you can see because it sank into the paper, there's no gesso here. Nothing that I did today has gesso. Uh, so you can see it's soaked in and absorbed and it's not nearly as glossy as it will be on if I put a second layer or if I put on gesso. And look, there's the little butterfly that's stamped off. It'd be cool to just trace around that. It's pretty fun. So I could stamp on top of this or do whatever, collage, tissue, whatever you wanna do, you can do on top of this. Anything you can do over Dina's acrylics, you can do over these acrylic sprays. So, pretty cool. All right, so thanks for joining me for this play session. I will be doing next, I think, a little test so we can compare it over different types of paper and gesso. So we just use the collage tissue and plain naked paper <laughs> today, right? And, um, but what about gesso? And what about craft cardstock? And what about the burlap and all those things? So I'll be back um, in another video for those. So thanks for watching, I'll see you soon.